Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
We're having spun creations, his pride and adoration, treasures woven by his love. His careful hands, they hold us safe within his promise of calling and of destiny. We're heaven spun creation, his pride and adoration, treasures woven by his love. His careful hands, they hold us safe within his promise of calling and of destiny. And I will sing of
There won't be a day that you're not by my side. There won't be a day that you let me fall. In all of my life, your love will be true. With all of Just worship him tonight. Just worship him tonight. We will worship you. <laughs> Come on, just release the sound of worship in this place. Come on, don't hold back tonight. We're going to worship him in spirit and in truth because he is faithful. He is a living God. He loves us. His love is never going to fail. He is a great God and he is all. We thank you for your love, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. <laughs>
God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. Lift your voice, lift your voice. Bless him. Lift your hands. Worship him. Bless him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless you. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Your name is above every name. Blessed be your mighty name. The name of Jesus is above every name. Glory to the King. Thank you, Father, for sending Jesus to Calvary to die for us, to pay the price for our sin that we might be set free. We bless you. We glorify and magnify your name. Father, we also thank you so much for the Holy Ghost, for the ministry of the Holy Ghost. He's upon us, in us, and working through us to accomplish your will and purpose. We bless you. We give you glory. In the name of Jesus, the name that's above every name. Hallelujah. God is good. Oh, hallelujah. Wonderful to be here tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is good. Going to ask you to love on a few folks. Bless somebody and tell them you're really glad they're here tonight. And then have a seat. Hallelujah. God is good. Mr. Spencer Person is going to come and uh, share the announcements with us. Hallelujah. I give it volume. Sweet. <clears throat> All right, sweet. So, first, I just want to welcome any, any first time visitors in the room. Uh, if you are here, uh, the ushers have amen booklets giving you all the information of the church's uh, new events for this month. Um, so please raise your hand so you can get one of those. So we give you a couple of seconds for those. Yes, awesome. We're so glad that you all are here. Seriously. All right, and then uh, with the ushers, in addition to that, they also have the Bible reading sheet for this month uh, with prayer and fasting on there. Uh, so please make sure everybody gets one of those and checks that out. Uh, make sure you guys, you know, are standing your word and are spending time with the Lord because that is the best thing you all can do. So seriously, make sure you grab one of those. Um, and then the next, uh, we have our souls thermometer. Um, and Pastor, last week mentioned that so far this month, we have 156 souls saved. Sweet. 
like he says, we're a soul winning bunch. So make sure that you guys are spreading the word. Seriously, we're the light of this earth. We're the city on the hill. So make sure you're taking the time to show that seat, okay? Uh, and if you need to turn any of those in, you can do them on the website. There are also boxes uh, in this building and in the youth building as well. So if you're here for fitness or any time during the week, make sure that you turn those in. Sweet. Um, this Sunday, uh, Dr. David Mohan will be here. Sweet. For all, all services. So please make sure that you bring somebody, uh, invite somebody to hear this awesome word that he's going to bring. Okay. Um, also, Sunday is water baptism training and service as well. Uh, that's going to be at 1230 in the West Wing Gym. Uh, so if you want to go check that out, please do so. Um, to register, um, you just head out to Info Central. Sweet. And then... Um, Right after that, uh, later we, this month, we have Joey and Becky Cruz for our family worship night. Um, yeah, so it's always cool just to, um, you know, bring somebody who maybe has never experienced anything like that. Um, worship is just, you know, time we spend with the Lord. It's not just here, um, but when you get in the corporate atmosphere, it's just amazing. You know, it never fails. Uh, so please bring somebody in. I mean, healings, everything, deliverance is just going to take place. So the Holy Spirit is going to touch hearts. Okay, sweet. Um, please remember that Fit to Serve uh, is here at church. The gym is open on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, okay, and that's from around like 6, 6.30ish to about 9, um, so we're always here, and they also have 10K training on Saturday mornings. I know it's cold, but we all have jackets, so please make sure that you do so with that, all right, um, and also at the end of the month, we have uh, Faith Landmarks Ministerial uh, Fellowship Conference. Um, it is a free event, um, so if you have not already, um, because there will be refreshments and whatnot, you must register. So if you get a chance, please go do so on the website. Uh, if you need more information about that, that will also be out there at Info Central. And then on February 2nd, if you know any young people, uh, we have the big game day service. Um, so that will be at night. We'll be checking out the Super Bowl. Okay, so please go fill up your car with people, random kids on the street. Bring them. They tell us to do that all the time. Um, and then for all three services on March 1st, Steve Hage will be here. Yes. Yes, that'll be awesome. So please make sure you come do that. Uh, if uh, any, the ushers also will have the Waves of Glory pamphlet uh, for any of the women uh, who have not heard about the women's retreat. Yes, um, and that is, and FLM is hiring. Um, so uh, if you know anybody or you yourself are looking to work uh, under an awesome anointing, please uh, come, come check out the church. We have uh, an awesome daycare that's looking for help as well as club fund positions uh, with flexible hours uh, and good wage. So that's all I have to say. Hallelujah. God is good. Yeah. Going to ask you, if you would, please stand to your feet. Uh, thank you, Brother Spencer. Uh, good job. Hallelujah. And uh, so if you would look around a, a bit again, if, if you could, and see if it's possible to find somebody that you have not greeted, uh, bless and love on that person. Tell them it's a great thing you're here today, and then have a seat. Hallelujah. Okay, well, you've got it over here on this side. Praise the name of Jesus. God is good. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Are you ready? Praise the name of Jesus. Are you ready? Open your Bibles, please. God is good. Hallelujah. It is the will of God uh, for us to prosper. Have uh, just a few verses here that I want to read to you out of Proverbs chapter 3. Uh, hallelujah. Verse 9, it says, Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of your increase. So shall your barns be filled with plenty and your presses shall burst out with new wine. Hallelujah. God is good. So the first part is the we do part. The second part is the he does part. You know, he, he uh, fulfills his promises. He brings his word to pass. 
Um, thank you, Lord Jesus. God is good. So when we act on his word by faith, then uh, God, he's actually obligated himself to his promises. And so when we act on his word by faith, he is then obligated, which he enjoys that. God enjoys that. That's the reason why he asked us to prove him. We obligate him just by virtue of his own promises to reciprocate with abundance. Glory to God. God is good. Hallelujah. So good to be here tonight. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Every believer should be a tither and a giver. Glory to the King. Amen. If you're giving uh, cash in the offering, I'm going to ask you to lift your hand like this for a moment, if you would, please. Uh, very high in the air. Hold it up like that. Just keep it there till the ushers again are able to see you. They're going to give you one of our seed envelopes. You're writing a check. Make your checks out to FLM or Faith Landmarks Ministries. Praise you, Jesus. God is good. You can also use that envelope for credit card, debit card giving, should you desire. Any person like that, nice and high. Envelope for your cash giving. Blessed be the name of Jesus. God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, one more time just to make sure we have everybody. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, now the ushers also have with them our commit envelopes. Uh, we use these for our stewardship campaign commitments, strategic preparation. Uh, if you need one of those to, tonight for your campaign commitment, just lift your hand up like that, and the ushers will put one of those in your hand as well. Glory to the King. God is good. Everything pertaining to that envelope goes into the building fund. Praise you, Jesus. So you can use it for cash. You can uh, do credit card uh, with that. Uh, you can also put a check in it. Hallelujah. Any person like that, nice and high. God is good. Okay. Looks like uh, we've got everybody. Praise you, Jesus. So, again, you might still be working on your tithe, your offering, but if you would please, whatever form it's in, if you would just take it in your hand like this with me, hold it up before God, and let's say this together. Heavenly Father, we are faithfully acting on your word by faith in Jesus' name. Father, we know you are faithful to reciprocate and pour out abundance as you've stated into our lives. We receive it by faith in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. And so ushers, uh, again, if you would please, uh, just a few more seconds for everyone to pr uh, prepare and then receive the offering. Ladies Fellowship Retreat this March 12th through the 14th as we head to Virginia Beach for our Waves of Glory Conference with guest speakers Karen Wheaton and Lindsay Doss. Register online at faithlandmarks.org today. God has put eternity in our hearts. We're not waiting for God to do something and finish. He's already finished, and it's just got to work its way back into our lives. Alcanzando el Mundo Hispano is our special translation program that helps us get God's message out to the Latino community. Translating during the 1030 Sunday service and all camp meeting night services, the Hispanic Outreach Department makes hearing pastor in Spanish a reality. We are so excited to welcome Hallelujah. To okay, going to ask you again if you would please stand to your feet. And uh, I'm going to ask you to look around a bit again and see if it's possible to find uh, one or more people that you haven't greeted tonight. Love and bless on them. Tell them great thing that you're here and then have a seat.
Hallelujah. God is good. Wow. Qu quiet in this Christian house tonight. You know, we have been having a tremendous uh, time, prayer and fasting. That went over big. Pra <laughs> praise the Lord. And uh, formally, uh, we are finished. God, is, as far as the time, we said 21 days and that was yesterday. Hallelujah. But uh, we're continuing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is... 65, 365 days, okay. Hallelujah. God is good. So we've learned some uh, new and powerful things about fasting. Isaiah chapter 58, praise the Lord. God is good. God there is talking about us setting ourselves aside and uh, serving and blessing and being a blessing to people. Hallelujah, uh, actually reporting to him and then he uh, assigns us to uh, projects. Glory to God, God is good. You know what, I, I believe that uh, it would be in everybody's interest for you to stand up again, if you don't mind, and uh, go looking about a bit and uh, this time see if it's possible, maybe five people that you haven't greeted. Love and bless on uh, those people, tell them it's great you're here and then have a seat. Hey, Pastor. Love and bless you, Pastor. You too. How are you? Bless. Good to see you. Enjoyed that prayer breakfast the other day. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Amen. Hallelujah. Love you, brother. Love you too. Appreciate you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, God is good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So wonderful to be here tonight. God is good. Now, uh, you know, we were talking to, I'm gonna uh, idle my motor here for a minute. Uh, several years ago, we had a, uh, we were having a conference with one of our school teachers uh, and she was telling us, she was a, like an educational professional, had been in education all of her life, and she, she said, well, you know, there's this crescendo moment. It's actually a, a crisis moment. In every calendar year, she was talking about just the cycles of people. And uh, she said that uh, it's, it's the third week of February. And it, where, where for school kids, it, it's like, you know, everything beyond that point is like a watershed moment. Okay, and, but that's the crisis point. Hallelujah. So uh, this, what the period that we're in right here, this is like the dead of winter. But you're not dead, are you? <laughs> that's the reason why I'm gonna ask you to stand up again. <laughs> just stand up. Hallelujah, you don't have to go milling around. Uh, just stand up. Hallelujah, you're alive. You can if you want. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. So I'm just going to go out on a limb and say it's going to be a snowless winter. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 
Now, I know some people believe for snow, they want snow, okay, but they, they can have it. All they got to do is move a little further north and they, go ahead. Hallelujah. But uh, here, how many of you are on board with a snow, snowless winter? Okay, you weren't very enthusiastic. Snowless, yeah, I said snowless. Snowless winter. Snowless winter. No snow. Make it plain, that's right. Hallelujah. God is good. Okay, so I'm gonna ask whoever's in the sound booth if you would please turn this microphone up just a tad. Thank you. Hallelujah, that's, that's better. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank God for his grace. He is the God who is more than enough. Hallelujah. Okay, so uh, Wednesday nights we're in a series that's entitled New Covenant Precepts. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is number four. Uh, praise God. You might not be able to see this from where you are, but this sheet of paper is an example of a document that is just like bullet points, okay? Uh, not unlike uh, the cover page of many um, contracts that you might have seen, uh, insurance contracts, they have a, a, like a cover page, finance contracts, same thing, okay? And so you have these, these line items, on those uh, cover pages. The intent is to make it simple so that you all, with one look, you can just see what is the actual nature of uh, the contract, the coverage, uh, the, the payment plan, whatever it may be. Hallelujah. Just a means of communication. Are you out there tonight? Okay, so uh, when you take a book like that, and present it to people, that can look infinitely complicated. And so consequently, uh, a lot of people don't even bother with reading the Bible. Wow. Just because it scares them away. Hallelujah. So, but we do, we, re we read the word. Okay, are you out there tonight? Okay, now here, here's another little thing. I, 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 we tell this to our staff, teaching them about what people will read and won't read. Okay, so uh, it's like junk mail that comes to your house. You know why they have those things on the outside of the envelope? Because as you're reading it, walking from the mailbox to your front door, you're deciding what goes in the trash when you get in the door. And if it looks complicated, you're not even gonna open it. If you can't tell what it is, you're not even gonna, so they, they put it whatever it is on the outside. How Are you following that? Okay, so that's the nature of a biblical precept. Okay, now, now we have a new covenant Hallelujah, okay, which is the, the one that you and I are under. God deals with man on the basis of covenants. Okay, so in, in this uh, Bible, you have the old covenant, which actually includes several covenants, okay? Uh, what the, the, the diction section called the Old Testament is actually several different covenants, Okay? Hallelujah. Uh, but then you have the new covenant. A back portion. Hallelujah. God is good. So just a, a little uh, info about Bible reading. Uh, every now and then we lapse over to the old covenant. We will from time to time. But predominantly we just, you know, get people to, if, just to read through the New Testament. Get it on the inside of you. Now, so it's, it's not, uh, this is a biblical point. It's not about trying to understand it while you're reading it. It's get it on the inside of you and then the Holy Ghost will reveal it to you. Once you get it in there, 
Okay? And, and that can be just as simple as, okay, I'm going to run with the vision. Look at, look at that. Okay, you're, you're going to see things that are going to go inside of you. This is just a simple example of what we're talking about. This is our amen booklet. Praise the Lord. We're going to get that. But then uh, in life, the Holy Ghost is going to bring up those things to you. In this case, we're talking about precepts. He's going to bring these precepts up. Hallelujah. So what, what we're doing here tonight is just installing a portion of a precept. Hallelujah. Make it simple. Just, just put it in there. Glory to God. You, you know, you're uh, not going to get it all in, in one standing. Hallelujah. But God's word is alive. Amen. So just get, get it on the inside. Let him do the supernatural part. Amen. You know, Jesus talked about it being a seed. And God causes it to grow, uh, which is where the power comes from. Okay, so new covenant precepts, hallelujah, this is one that you find, uh, we actually have this simplified down, you know, it's, it's like what I was just telling you about making it from the mailbox to the house, there's five simple things that you find in the New Testament that are the precepts that your life, your Christian life should be based on. Okay, so uh, number one, salvation slash righteousness, baptism of the Holy Ghost, healing, deliverance, hallelujah. Did, did, there it is, hallelujah. We must be getting interference in this room. Praise the Lord. Anyway, deliverance, see as soon as I uh, started talking about the devil, about you being free from the devil, uh, okay, so deliverance, that's, that's going to be next week, but tonight is divine prosperity. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, just a little public, uh, personal testimony. As a studier, uh, when Pastor Sheree and I first started into the ministry, this year we're celebrating... Uh, 40 years in having started this church, you know, we, we were actually in the ministry for a brief period before we started this church. Okay, so I've, I've been ministering the word for about 45 years. I, I spent more time, and, and I'm talking about being led by the Holy Ghost. I spent more time on prosperity than any other subject. I don't know why. You can ask him when we get there. But I know for a, a fact that I got something down on the inside of me about finances. I got some revelation. Hallelujah. And so we uh, live in that and walk in it on a daily basis. So divine prosperity. We're not talking about how hard you work. We're not talking about how good you are, how educated you are, how tall you are, Amen. how talented you are. This has absolutely nothing to do with any of that. Amen. It's called divine prosperity, Amen. meaning this is the part that he does. Amen. Now, we have a part in divine prosperity, but this is what he did to set you free from financial constraints. God is good. Okay, so uh, 2 Corinthians 8, 9, we'll start there. First of all, let's begin with prayer. Thank you, Lord. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We thank you tonight for your word. I thank you for each person present, for who they are in the body of Christ, and for what you have called each of them to do with their lives this time this period in the earth in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I ask you that this word will gain entrance into the hearts of your people. 
I ask you that you'll cause this word to grow up. We know you will because you're faithful to do that. You'll bring it to pass in each person's heart and life in the name of Jesus. And Father, I also ask you for utterance by your spirit that I might speak accurately and clearly those things that you desire into the hearts and minds of your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. God is good. Okay, so uh, I'm impelled of the Lord just to give you a little perspective before we launch into this tonight. God is smarter than we are. Okay, so he knows things that are coming and things that are happening before they happen. We're talking ages, you know, millennia, all these type of things, and it, it escapes humankind to understand those things. Now, he reveals things to us, okay? But uh, God has installed this message of prosperity in the church for a particular time. So that when the church gets there, which we're coming into that season right now, the reality of this revelation growing in the church would be able to, God would be able to use the revelation of that to sustain his people. Just like Joseph and, and the Pharaoh's dream about the seven lean years and the seven fat years, remember that? And, and twice he saw that. Hallelujah. So God was, and that was a secular kingdom, but it actually involved all people. You know, it was, it was, it was a, that was the major uh, civilization on earth at the time. And what God was doing was preserving seed. So he raised up his man to go down to Egypt at a crucial time, okay? And by the Spirit of God, work out a way to sustain life for the largest, most powerful nation on earth so that they could pass through this rough spot, get over to the other side and sustain life going into the future. Are you out there tonight? Hallelujah. So uh, I know for a fact that God puts certain things in the body of Christ like a deposit. Okay, and, and the, the intention is he's smarter than we are. So it's like he's banking something against the future, just like with Joseph. Hallelujah. So these precepts, he's put these in the new covenant and made them just really plain so that we can see it Hallelujah. And his intention is, is to arm us for the future. All right, so I hope you're out there tonight prepared to, to hear, receive. This is bigger than you. A lot of this you might have heard many times in the past. Okay, well, hallelujah. God is good. We, we have a couple of things to say about that as we conclude. Okay, but uh, look at 2 Corinthians 8, 9. The reason why we need divine prosperity is because of what happened to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. But if you would look at verse 9, 2 Corinthians 8, 9, it says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to stop here for just a minute and, and tell you something. People have a tendency to respond to things that they think they need. Often it's like uh, impulsive. Okay? And, but yet, God says there's another whole way of doing things which is called wisdom. So uh, Jesus talked about this a lot and particularly when it came to money that you lay up in store for a, a season. He talked about laying it up in heaven. Right? So at the, the time, see the time that you're at, it could be 
Uh, and, and this is the way it's shown to us in Scripture. It could be a fat season, middle of the summer, lots of abundance everywhere, okay? But the book of Proverbs tells us go to the ant because the ant doesn't need any overseer, guide, or leader but it, the ant is going to be out there going through the same thing regardless of the season. Okay? Hallelujah. So as we go through this tonight, don't be thinking about your condition. Good or bad. Age, none of that. Just, just let the word get down on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You might not be in a crisis. It might be a fat season for you right now. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't let the word be laid up in you. Because you have no idea what's coming. And not to forget that the, when you get the word on the inside of you, it's not just for you. There's generations possibly still yet to come. Times to come. Hallelujah. All right. So uh, Adam and Eve uh, got into trouble. If you would, I'm going to show it to you. Just go with me over to uh, Genesis chapter 3. Hallelujah. So poverty is uh, something that every person on earth is familiar with. You became acquainted with it as a very small child. The reason why you were crying when your, empty, your stomach was empty as a baby is because of poverty. Wow. It was an expression of a need. And the reason why you had to bellow like that was because you had to make sure that mama understood the things were getting critical down in you. Are you out there? Had it not been for sin, there wouldn't be any, any of that going on. There would be no uh, stark expression of need because all the needs would be met. Ooh, now that, that actually is a picture of eternity for us. See, we're, we're not going to a place where need rules. But here in this place, everything and everybody, everything in our existence here is oriented towards need. It's the reference point that everyone and everything is attached to. The passing of time, all of it has to do with poverty. God is good. Are you out there tonight? But we're, we're, we're switching over. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to go from being poverty and need oriented over to abundance and supply oriented. Amen. We're going to learn how to think and act differently. But let, let me just read to you uh, poverty here. Uh, Genesis chapter 3, uh, verse 17. It's about the second half of the verse. Uh, God said to Adam specifically, Cursed is the ground for your sake. In sorrow shall you eat of it all the days of your life. So that's another way of saying from the time that you're a baby. You know, Adam was already an adult when he was created. Okay, but Every child that's born into the earth from cradle to grave is going to be acquainted with poverty. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In sorrow shall you, but that, that's the, the baby's crying that I was just telling you about. Hallelujah. In sorrow shall you eat of it all the days of your life. Okay. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to you, and you shall eat of the herb of the field. Now, the thorns and the thistles, another way of looking at that is it's going to take a lot of hard work, and you're still not going to be satisfied. This is poverty, okay? 
still not going to be satisfied with the outcome. It's, even doing your best, talented, abilities, education, youth, all of it going in the right direction, you're still going to have this hollow feeling of sorrow on the inside knowing that something is wrong because even though you may, and, and this is the way poverty works, even though things might be going well now, you've already experienced the lack and the orientation for mankind is towards the fear of not having enough. Oh, go ahead and say amen. So the thorns and thistles are a painful element to remind that just because something happened, this is poverty. I'm, I'm not talking about this is not us, but this is poverty. Just because something happened well doesn't mean it'll ever happen well again. That's poverty. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Look at verse 19. In the sweat of your face shall you eat bread till you return to the ground. See, so it's, it's cr uh, cradle to grave. Sweat of your face you'll eat of the eat. You shall eat your bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For dust you are, and unto dust you shall return. Now that's a bleak announcement. Hallelujah. Uh, that actually, uh, we did a, a, a series, started a series here a few weeks back on hope. That actually is intended to cast a hopeless perspective. Because God just wanted to make sure everybody understood what's going on. Are you out there? All right. Now, so again, that's the nature of poverty. But uh, Jesus, this is the reason why it's so important to get a hold of this. God loves us. His intention was never for man's existence to be like this. So... To redeem man from uh, sin, poverty, just like sickness and disease, poverty had to be included. It had to be specific. Just to finally cut us loose from the control of poverty. Now thank God, hallelujah, hallelujah, for heaven, you know, just the way we describe it, you know, to, to be frank about it, you should understand that uh, the new Jerusalem is actually coming to the earth. The earth is going to be renovated. The curse, that curse right there will be gone. Now, I like to point out that cursed is the ground for your sake. Uh, the, the ground is not actually cursed. It's Adam that's cursed. And anything that he does relative to the earth is going to turn out bad. Well, the reason why that condition is going to change is because God has changed man. The new man. The new creation, are you out there tonight? So uh, big deliverance, everything you set your hand to now prospers. You've been delivered from poverty and then God has, there's some real specific ways of looking at this, okay? But we've been delivered from poverty, which is the takeaway element, the struggle element, the hardship, the uh, hurt of the, the sense of abandonment, you know, the, the thing of thinking, well, tomorrow it starts all over again. All of that is what we've been delivered from. Okay? And predominantly by Jesus taking sin out of the picture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so if you look at it like this, this helps you to conceive an understanding, uh, if the sin is gone, then man is back in 
close association with God, who is the source? See, so then it becomes a matter of, okay, I'm going to relate to him the way he actually is, and I'm going to relate to myself the way I actually am now. I'm a new creature. That poverty life has been put to death. The old man is dead. God is good. Now, you know, I, I'm actually in a, in a situation where things work favorably for me. Instead of everything being bad news, it's now good news. I'm blessed. Blessed coming in, blessed going out. Head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Are you out there? See, all of those expressions are talking about the new condition of, of mankind. Now, in Christ Jesus, uh, the, the work is already done. When you got saved, you were delivered out of the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. You've already been made rich. Hallelujah. Now, if your pocketbook doesn't know about it yet, it's because your head doesn't know about it yet. So you're still living in the old man. That's to be carnally minded is death, the Bible tells us. God is good. Okay. Now, so uh, if you would back over to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9. This time it's verse 8. Hallelujah. God is good. Are you blessed out there tonight? Now this has nothing, you know, what, what, what we're talking about tonight is if you receive this as the word of the Lord and forget about your rent payment and all the things that you, if, if you receive this, it will deliver you from the care of live, living hand to mouth, paycheck to paycheck, or it'll deliver you from the power of money. God is good. All right. So that's what this verse is all about, verse 8. And God is able, how many of you believe God is able? Yes. Okay. God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound. You see that word abound? That means more than enough. May abound to every good work. So uh, it uh, Prosperity releases you from the care of yourself so that you can do just exactly what God wants you to do is focus on the needs of others. You can abound to every good work. Instead of being tight-fisted and stingy, prosperity releases you to be a blessing. Hallelujah. God is good. All right, so just, uh, I'm just kind of going through a few of these scripture references. Then I'm going to give you some action points. Okay, but uh, Galatians chapter 3, look at verse 29. This is one of the promise structures. Hallelujah. These are all part of the same precept. Divine prosperity. God is good. If you be Christ's, Galatians 3.29, if you be Christ, how many of you belong to Christ? If you be Christ's, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now, so God made a promise to Abraham, all right? And I, I just kind of wrote down a capsulization. You can find it in book of Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. But God started out talking to Abraham by saying, I will bless you. I will make a great nation out of you. We are. I will make your name great, which is another way of saying that, you know, people kind of, uh, I'll give you an illustration. Okay, so if you uh, watch like a flock of birds fly, in, in the sky, they, they're, they're flying like uh, in a group 
and they come to a tree, well, they go around the tree because the name of the tree is great to the bird. Did you get that? So that's what happens with you. You, you become the thing in the space that people know has power. Now, because the bird knows if I run into that tree, I might not make it over to the other side. Okay, so birds don't fly into trees on purpose, usually. They go around, right? So he says, I will make your name great. Your name is one to be respected. Now, so when, when you can hear people talking, when, when they feel violated, what they're really saying is nobody has any respect for my name. Oh, it got quiet all of a sudden. How, you know, and there, there's people, groups all over the world that feel that at one time or another, depending on who it is that they're around. Everybody feels violated. All people groups feel violated at, at one point or another. Okay. But greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. I will make your name great. So your name is great among men. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Looking for an amen out there, a good amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Okay, so Abraham's seed, so uh, you're blessed already. He's going to make your name great. And then he says that he will use you to bless all families on the earth. Hallelujah. So same thing about abundance. You have enough left over. You, all your needs are met and you're able to be a blessing to people. Okay, and then uh, he, in so many words, he says, nobody can curse you. Now, that's another one of those things, you know, that, that really bothers people. When, when uh, in today's world, when people feel that someone has power over them, they feel cursed by it. That's, that's basically because people don't trust people. And rightly so. But nobody has power over you except him. And he's loving, kind, gentle, merciful, long-suffering. Come on and say amen. He's always lifting you up, building you up. In fact, he's the only one that you know or have ever met who is like that all the time, every time, never stops, never quits. Come on and say amen. amen. So you acquire a sense of security from him. And you learn to dwell in his presence. You learn to accept being blessed. And, and then you know, if, if somebody tries to curse you, it, it just like doesn't even apply to you. But when people are talking about how bad they feel about this and how bad they feel about that, uh, they, they just need to get, the, if they're Christians, they need to get their minds renewed. Who are you out there tonight? Okay. So, uh, hallelujah. The, those are uh, precepts. It's all part of the precept of divine prosperity. Are you out there? Now, there's some uh, homework that you could be working on, uh, which I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes about that. Glory to God. God is good. So, these precepts are settled at Calvary and are irreversible. Okay, so the parts that I'm about to share with you cannot be changed by what you do. But you can, there are things that you can do that will enhance greatly 
your experience and the amount of prosperity that you're able to actually operate in. Okay, so I uh, heard this expression years ago. You know, if, if you wait until the storm starts to start building your house on healing or prosperity, then you're going to be out there in the storm trying to make up for where it, it should be when the storm hits. Remember, Jesus said, if you hear the word and do it, you're going to be building your house on the rock. So it's already on the rock. Now, so what happens Sometimes people wait until they have a problem to get started on the answer. So uh, recommendation from Jesus is don't wait for the problem to start you on the answer. You go ahead and start now. Hallelujah. Thank God for his grace. Okay, so uh, that being said, Work principles are something that will enhance your experience. Hallelujah. Now, if you would go with me over to uh, Matthew chapter 6, I want to show you something there that Jesus was teaching about God's provision. This is important to uh, keep in mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's going to sound blunt and stark for some people. Some people might take it the wrong way. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Matthew chapter 6, look at verse 30. Jesus said, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the, into the oven, shall he not much more Clothe you, O ye of little faith. Now, so what Jesus was talking about, the, the, the flowers are beautiful without working for it. The bird, God feeds the birds without, now they have to, you know, keep moving and, and go the right place at the right time. But God is the one that produces the fur, food for the birds. Are you there? They don't have a job. Now, you know, this, this is not recommending that you become lazy. But it is important to understand when you start talking about work principles that there's a lot of people that work really hard and are very diligent, but they're still under the control of poverty. See, work principles do not free you from poverty. Are you out there? Well, it, it, it's, it's, it's actually opposite from that. Okay? So when faith doesn't work on a basis of natural strength. So what Jesus is talking about here is the same way that the, uh, he closed the grass of, of the field. The, the, those lilies, consider the lily. It's beautifully made, beautifully, beautifully clothed. Solomon in all of his glory was not made like one of these. So as hard as you can work, it's still not going to be enough to outrun poverty. But if you use your faith in what Jesus did for you at Calvary and then use your faith to learn how to trust God as your source, see him as your source, and then say, okay, because I'm a good steward over what God has given me, I'm going to be productive. Now, there's a lot of things about work that is, makes it more valuable than just what you achieve uh, as Re re remuneration. Work makes a better person. Hallelujah. So, so it's like a conversion of yourself happens when you work hard, effectively. 
Okay, so, so we're not working for money. Are you there? Working for him. Which is our service of him. Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. So work principles were created for you to know how God operates. And so that you can be like him. Now he, he does things by faith. But faith is not lazy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So if you try to operate in prosperity and leave work principles out, strong possibility you're going to have some trouble with character. Like, you know, things like not paying bills, writing faith checks, etc. Amen. Just little humor to throw. Are, are you out there? Okay, now, you know, there, there's different parts of the world where the people in those areas are more stringent about their work pr principles than other places. Uh, this part of the United States is really tough on laziness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, that's, that's an observation from somebody that, that uh, didn't come from here. I've been at other parts of the United States, and when I came here, I, I thought to myself, boy, these people are tough. <laughs> and they are. Now, I've been operating in prosperity for so long that, um, you know, I kind of lose reference point with, with the way people operate. Okay. But one of the, the big things that uh, has come uh, lately is lying, lack of character. Okay, so work principles will work that out of you. Because there's this attitude that goes along with something for nothing. Who are you there? God is good, and it erodes a person's character. Before long, they're lying. Now, here, here's what happens to a, a believer who falls into lying. Remember when Jesus said, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So liars don't believe their own word. So it erodes at the very foundation of faith. People that don't tell the truth have a really, really difficult time using their faith. All right, so the, the virtue of work principles. Are you out there? Okay, now I know that predominantly you're going to find most of that, if you, a concise version of it, in the book of Proverbs. Okay, now same with money management principles. Hallelujah. So I uh, got this little saying years ago, if your outgo exceeds your income, then your upkeep becomes your downfall. So every believer, I, I believe God will teach every believer how to count. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, again, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's like it's difficult to walk in divine healing if you're going to eat three Big Macs a day. That, that's an old joke. But you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so it's the same way with prosperity. You know, walking in divine prosperity is going to be very difficult for people who won't manage their money. So uh, I believe God would, would, would give a person, if their math skills are off, he, he will help them to, to count it up. 
Because you need to be able to count up how much comes in. You need to be able to count up how much goes out. And if your outgo is exceeding your income, then your upkeep, in other words, the future is going to be your downfall. Hallelujah. Money management principles. Now, it's a lot digger, bigger and deeper than that. But again, you know, Book of Proverbs is a good place to get started. All right. And then the third thing is learn to see God as your source. Now, uh, for instance, when a person goes to work, who are they working for? If you're working for the man, then your eyes are going to be on man as your source. If you're working for a paycheck, then your eyes are going to be on your paycheck as your source. Very difficult. For people who have their eyes on things like that to believe God for prosperity because they don't see how it can happen. Are, are you out there? Is it, hallelujah. So get your eyes off of those natural things. God is your source. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is good. Well, I don't know about you, but I... Personally enjoyed that. Amen. Glory to the King. The Lord is good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. We're going to have a confession. Now, this is actually another New Testament precept. He put this in our mouths on purpose so we could say the words. Awfully quiet in this Christian house. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you, if you would please to uh, say this with me, Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the blessing of Abraham and for my deliverance from poverty. I say with my mouth that I've been made rich because of your work at Calvary. I'm blessed going in, I'm blessed going out. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the finished work that you've done for me at Calvary. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, I see you as my source. I receive abundance from you on a continual and ongoing basis. Thank you, Father, for divine prosperity. Thank you, Jesus, for your work delivering me from the power of sin so that I can prosper in everything I do. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to ask you, if you would, love on a couple of folks, shake somebody's hand, tell somebody you're glad you were here tonight. Be blessed. Have a good evening. God is good. See you on Sunday.